What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Hopeful Wisdom. This is episode eight. I'm super excited. My guest today and I are talking about Rebbe Nachman and the Nanach movement. And for those who don't know, my guest is actually is actually Yishai Ramanoff of Mashiach Oi, Jewish punk rock. And Yishai, you and I actually met several years ago when you were playing with Aaron Muller in, um, in the Lower East Side. It was like over 10 years ago we met. So it's very Sounds nice right. to see you again. Cool. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it sounds about right. We did a lot of shows in the Lower East Side about 10 years ago. Sounds about right. Yep. So it's good to see your face. It's been about 10 years. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so tonight's episode is celebrating Ruby Nachman. And there is actually, before we get started, I wanted to dedicate this inform this episode because we are about Torah learning to the Rafor Shalema of um, a rabbi right now who's suffering with the coronavirus. He's a breast club rabbi that we can pretty much thank for most things written about Rabbi Nachman in English to this one particular gentleman. So please, God, we ask to give an immediate miraculous Rafor Shalema to Rabbi Chaim Kramer, and let me give his name, his full Hebrew name. Please, Hashem, grant in a miraculous and immediate refuah shalema to Chaim Menachem Ben Leah. So please, God. All right. So, why don't we start like this? There are people who are going to say, well, who's Rabbi Nachman? Why is it important? Why don't we get started with who is Rabbi Nachman? Where, what is a little bit of his background? So Rabbi Nachman was a Jewish teacher. And um, he lived about 200 years ago. And he himself said that he, he said, he said that, you know, there's a quote from Rabbi Nachman that kind of sums him up. I think he said to his followers, he said, come with me and I'm going to take you on a new path. Right? He told us, I'm going to take you on a new path that nobody's ever walked on before. He said, even though it's really the old path that our, that our ancestors walked on, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, all our ancestors, this was really the way that Yiddishkeit was 3,000 years ago. This really is the old path. But since things have changed so much and the world has gotten you know, so, uh, so different in that time, he said, now it's going to seem like a new path. So basically what Rabbi Nachman was saying was that what he was teaching was nothing new, really. He said, right. really, the, 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 um, what Abraham Avinu brought down to the world, right? The teaching he brought down to believe in one God and to live your life with the belief that there's, a one, there's one Hashem that runs the world. Um, you know, Rabbi Nach was coming just to renew the same things that Abraham taught, that Yitzhak taught, that Yaakov taught, that what they taught got lost. You know, I mean, look at Yiddishkeit today where, you know, it's all about being a scholar, more or less. You know, right. and that's not that's not the path that was given to us by our ancestors. Rabbi Mitzchak, Yaakov, Yosef, Moshe, and Rabbi Nachman said, "I'm coming just to put bring things back to the way they were." Right. And his and his derech, what he taught, seems very out there to a lot of people, right? Like he told his followers to the woods and talk to Hashem in the woods, right? Right. And anybody that's who good. anybody who grew up in like a, in like a, the yeshivish kind of world. Um, knows that that's like not a normal practice in the right. like normal firm world right so for today for rabbi nachman tell people go speak to god in the woods seems very strange but he but he shows in his especially in the book Nefesh, it shows how all this is this was always the way in judaism right to go and talk to god in your own words abraham did it yitzchak did yaakov they all did it all all all, all of the abos did it all of the you know, the Dikim and the Nevi'im and all, throughout all the generations, this was the way of connecting to Hashem. But somehow over the generations, it got lost and replaced more with approaching Judaism from more of a scholarly way. Right. right. So Rabbi Nachman, you know, he was amazing. He was amazing because he was a scholar. He was a huge scholar. He was probably the greatest um, Jewish scholar alive in his generation. But at the same time, he brought down a way of serving God that was very simple. You know, he, he stressed more serving God with the heart and serving God with uh, his spotidu, speaking, you know, finding private time to speak to God in your own words. He spoke more, more about uh, focusing, focusing on your, uh, you know, relationships with the people around you and, right. and bringing God and bringing, 
uh, God into every single part of our lives. Um, and that was his chiddush, right? that was his uh, innovation. But like, it wasn't really an innovation. He was really br- bringing things back to the way they originally were. Right. But, uh, but in the world today, we, we need somebody who's able to do that. The world today is very uh, confused and very mixed up. And it's hard to, to you know, more and more realizing that what we need is a simple, more simple, to go back to a more simple path, right? Now, I, I, I mean, I'm saying just in the world in general, it seems to me like people like there's all these different movements like mindfulness and like all these different spiritual people are kind of starting to get the idea that like the more and more complicated the world becomes, the more and more we need just a simple path. Right. Right. And Rabbi Nachman gave a simple path. He explains very simply how any person, big or small, can come and, and connect to God and can serve God and be and be a great person in their own place. You don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to be smart. You don't, have to, you don't even have to be Jewish. You can be anything. Right. And there's a place for every single human being to come close to bring godliness into the world. See, one of the reasons I, I appreciate Rebbe Nachman so much is that it's the, the Breslov Nanach way of how we view the world. And this is, it's, it's coming from a leader who lived over 200 years ago and his teachings have not gotten lost. Whereas, I, I mean, what we're seeing, at least what I'm seeing from the people I know from Facebook, from Jews in general, is that his do has become, it's the concept has recently spread like wildfire. Yeah. And I think it's because there's a massive need. I, tr- I truly believe that we are going to see the, be alive and well, please God, soon for the reveal of Mashiach and the redemption. And I feel like we're seeing all kinds of Jews that are Orthodox or not from all kinds of backgrounds who are relating to Breslov rabbis and who are relating to the concept of his Bodhidu and how it can heal the world. And I think it's so interesting as Rabbi Nachman brought it back to the principles of what our forefathers did. Our forefathers called out to God and God, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. They didn't have a Hazal. They're, Abraham had no rabbi. He it was him and God and his family. I mean, Correct. there's a way, you know, when you think about it, we're praying things by way of conversation into existence so they can manifest. And this one leader basically re- reiterated this. And it seems like a, a while it got lost. And I feel like We've seen teachings of like Breslov teachings pop up out of nowhere. Rabbi Nathan's teachings pop up out of nowhere, where now this concept has become comfortable with most Orthodox Jews. What do you think? Well, it's be, yeah, I mean, what, you know, 200 years ago when Rabbi Nachman was first teaching this stuff, it was very controversial, and he had a lot of people who were like re- really against him, you know. And uh, also the, his followers, you know, the, for the first like hundred years of, of breast lovers, these people went through all kinds of, uh, you know, they were like chased out of town. They had rocks thrown at them deeply, you know? Right. And, uh, and it's true, right? Nowadays, like the, especially the last, I don't know, 50, I mean, I'm only 34, but, uh, you know, from what I understand, the last like half of the 20th century, things changed a lot. And breast love became much more acceptable. In the, in the like bigger Jewish world. And you can see the Brussels of books are now available. You know, Rabbi Odessa, uh, he used to tell his father, you know, in, like in the 1980s when he had these young followers in like the 20s and 30s, he would tell them, you don't, know, you don't know what it was like here 80 years ago. You know, when he was growing up, he was like, 80 years ago, people used to throw rocks at me. He was like, you couldn't find the Brussels of book anywhere. You had to search and search and search. To get, it, was like, it was like going to like buy like uh, some like illegal stuff to get right. Brussels of book, you know? Yeah, like go on, like under, under, underground, like fine, you know. And that, and now it's changed. Now, now, it, Breslov is a lot more acceptable, and uh, you can find Breslov books all over the place. And so, yeah, it's changing. We still but have a it, long way to go. Is uh, there? There's still a long way to go. But do you ever feel like we're on an accelerated path? That like, that the good that's being done. When you think about it, like Rabbi Dessler had to had to go underground and look high and low. Like Saba had to go and look for a Breslov book. We have now in every language, we have YouTube videos. <clears throat> I'm saying, it's very clear to me that the movement is growing and it's very clear to me that the movement is being divinely led. One of the things that makes Sabbath so holy is, t- do you, um, 
what's your knowledge on the letter he received from Rabbi Nachman from heaven? About the pet deck. Yeah. Uh, so, well, we, I mean, we could talk about it. Do you want to um, uh, talk? I mean, that, that was also a big, uh, I think, a big thing of revealing Rabbi Nachman more and more in the world was the pet deck. Um, I mean, a lot of things changed. I mean, what he was show, what, what, what Rabbi Adesu was saying this to his followers is how like things have changed. He was saying he was like he he was telling them this is the beginning of the gula. This right. is the be- he you know he what believed wholeheartedly. He start- Do you know what year he started saying that? What t- what year he started? Uh, he started waking about the- people up about the gula. Um, I mean, he didn't. He was not such a public figure until really like the early eighties. Okay. The early 80s is when he started really developing uh, like a following and becoming more public uh, and publicizing the Petek and uh, all that. Before that, he was more known only like amongst the breast lovers. Right. Yeah. But he, he, believed, he believed that the whole, go- the whole redemption depends on spreading Rabbi Nachman's teachings in the world, right? Without question. So he, so he was telling, he was like, and, and so he was telling younger people who may have been skeptical that Rabbi Nachman's teachings are going to spread so much in the world, right? Because right. they were trying to spread Rabbi Nachman's teachings and they were getting opposition. Right. And he was telling them, listen, you may think you're getting opposition, but he was like, this is nothing. Right. He, he, he was like, when I was growing up, you literally couldn't mention the word Breslov without people throwing rocks at you. And he was like, and look how much changed in 50 years, 60 years. Right. He's like, now nah, you can get, see, see, he's like, yeah, sure, there's still opposition, but it, things are changing and the, well, the gula yeah, is coming yeah. and, and more and more, you know, he was like trying to give them, uh, you know, strength. He was like, don't, you know, don't give up just because you see a little opposition. He was like, I saw way more opposition back in my day and, and I'm, I'm still here and Brussels right. is still spreading. So, you know. Now, and, what, something that I think for people who are going to watch this, they should understand is what are the reasons why we believe Rebbe Nachman is so holy and his teachings are so holy while they may be simple. Believe me, there's plenty. We haven't got into the Lakut Hamaran yet, but um, we believe that Rebbe Nachman was the reincarnation of Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu. That's one of the reasons why it's, for me, it's, and M- Moses happens to be, Moshe Rabbeinu happens to be one of my favorite Nevi'im, by the way. But, um, but uh, for me, it's on a far more personal level. Like, I look at my connection with Rabbi Nachman as a, almost like similar to what I look at as my connection with Moshe Rabbeinu. And I realized that I ha- once I educated myself on, like, the, on the exodus of Egypt, I realized I didn't realize how holy Moshe really was until I made right. the priority to actually educate myself on everything that happened. And I, side note, if anybody ever wants to blow their mind and how the world is amazing, study, study the earth scroll, the, the, the entire exodus of Egypt, just learn it again. It's just so powerful. Yeah. So but, that, that's, um, I realized I had an honest connection with him when I gave birth on Zion Adar and my children, I have twin boys that are years old. They were born with uh, 20% of was supposed to be there. They were born with a partial breast. So I realized Hashem has to be paying attention to our lives. They're they're twins? They're twins. Yeah. They're both, and they gave birth on Zion Adar. Yeah. So for me, when I take a look at just the, the connecting of the dots, it would only make sense that we would follow Rabbi Nachman because, again, we're going back to the foundation as we're following the, the recycled soul of an actual Navi who was taken into heaven. That soul holds holiness that is not, that is not regular. And I think right. that's something that should be understood is yeah. that you would have to have, for Rabbi Nachman to be able to wipe out a lot of darkness in Judaism. I mean, think about it. His Bodhidu is the most powerful level of prayer. You have the, you have the, um, uh, you have Tikkun Haklali, which is the removal of sin. Rebbe Nachman gave us the remedies of how to actually pray the world well, independent of what other people are doing. When you see a group of Nanaks singing and dancing, what people don't understand is these 
people are spreading sim simcha and joy and ahava into the, into the world. It's a right, the cultivation and a co like a collection of positive energy in the name of Hashem and in the name of a teacher who was once a prophet. So these are not regular human beings shooting into right. the world. I mean, right. I think, in my humble opinion, the Breslov, the, the Breslov and the Nanach movement that we've seen has, be an increase of is actually healing the world. It used to be how many people would go to Uman? That right. I mean, I mean uh, like 30 years ago when communism fell, it was maybe a few hundred people. Right. And now, there, and now there's, uh, you know, over, I don't know, 30, 40,000, something like that. Right. And these are not all Breslov people. So I'm saying the right. Breslov movement is infiltrating regular Orthodox Hasidish Judaism and, and cleaning up the spiritual darkness that exists there because you wouldn't see a lot of rabbis even 10 years ago telling you to talk to God. Right, correct. You know, Davin Shimona Esrei, do this, do that. I didn't know until someone told me, like when I made Shuva and I was convert in the process of converting to Judaism, this may sound so stupid because I talked to God my entire life as a non-Jewish kid. But um, when I became religious, I became so obsessed with davening the proper way that I completely right. forgot to talk to God. Like I actually had to have a rabbi tell me, no, it's okay. You can beg and scream and pray for yourself. Right. And, and yeah. form the heavens to kick the heavenly door down. So I, sure. when I was converting to Judaism, the concept of talking to God by the people who taught me how to be a Jewish person that was an afterthought you know what i mean yeah sure because that yeah i mean that that's probably true for a lot of baltruvas and converts because uh you're coming into this religion that has a language you don't know and so you want to learn all the prayers the proper way but then uh i mean what you went through is probably like pretty pretty normal or pretty common you know right people are so so um people coming in are so occupied with trying to learn all the laws and learn a new language and all this stuff that you know they forget about the most simple things like right. just stop just talking to god you know it's like the, it's literally like the most simple practice when you think you know not that it's easy it's not easy right. to do but like on the basic level it's it's the most simple like think of all the other things we have to right now we're clearing out all leavened bread from our homes for a whole right. week yeah that's like pretty that's that takes a lot of work right you know, to go outside and talk to god in your own words like theoretically is a really simple thing to do right and yet at the same time anybody who's tried to do it has found that it's not so simple like once you, you get know, out there and you start trying to talk and try it's not so easy to do but like on the on the on the simple level you know it's like uh it's simple <laughs> right yeah like but, uh, with the closing of all the minyanim like what i find is so interesting is that if his bow to do is actually healing and act capable of healing the world and his vote to do can be anything from if, even if you don't know what to say god give like please god give me the words to talk to you and express my feelings like even when you try to open up the dialogue it's such a it's it's such a healing method of prayer and what i think is so interesting now is that in, in, a, vibe, in a vibe that i get from this is that the world has to now, like all houses of worship have closed down. Right. There's a plague now that not your money, not your friends, it doesn't matter how cool you are, if you were popular or not. Now there's a real life plague. But wait a second. We had a plague last year too. We had the measles. So I'm saying it's pretty, it's, right. it's getting like, like shit's getting real. But like we really are messing with, like we really are dealing with, yeah. Five books of Moses, biblical, like the actual almighty, one and only almighty God. It has become so clear that there's earthquakes, I don't know, every other day, all over the place. It's getting real that we're dealing with the one and only God. And right. what I, I mean, think, yeah. Hold on, bringing you back to your point, the simplicity. Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman had something simple to offer, to offer people. They're shuls have to be shut down you can't pray with minion anymore right. now your prayers have to be sincere now your prayers have to mean something 
Now, Rabbi right. Nachman's teachings are more important than they ever were before. You don't have the nine other men in the minion now. Now it's right. just you. Now it's like you're toe to toe with your creator. It's you and God. For now, we all we have is his bow to do when you think about it. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I've heard a lot of people say this because when, you know, it's very easy to go to shul every day and completely space out the whole time. You know? Right. People do it all the time. You show up in the morning, you wrap on your tefillah, and you space out for for a half hour, and then you go on your way. Right. You know. Now, now it's like uh, now that now it's like uh, people are like stuck at home. You know, it's like people have to like face 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 themselves and face their families and face God. You know, everything is like uh, there's no place to run to anymore. You know what I'm saying? Right. People, people with families use shul as a way to get away from their family. Right, you know? for sure. Way to get away from their, their wife and kids, you know, for a little while. It's like, you know, uh, now all, all that stuff, you know, there's nowhere to go now. Everybody's home. And now, like you're saying, like, more than now, more than ever, people that, you know, people can now, you know, Rabbi Nachman's teachings about his produce and how they connect to God. He, he talks so much about how a person can connect to God. And he says so many times in his teachings that a person who has a strong heart can connect to God anywhere in the world. Right. right. People think I can only connect to God if I'm in a shul or I only can connect to God if I'm in like a holy place. Rabbi Nachman says so many times, he says a person who's strong, who has a strong heart, you could be anywhere in the world, anywhere in the universe, and you could be serving God right in that place where you are. Right. If your heart is strong enough because God is everywhere. God is just as much here, uh, you know, in the street where I'm standing right now as he is in the shul I go to, you know, he's just, he's just as present in either place. And the person can, can connect to him just as much in, in any place, you know, like it's, and, uh, and now people need to know that since they have no place to go. <laughs> but know? that's something that I think is, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this show topic sooner rather than later is because now is the time for people to educate themselves. And now is the time for Rabbi Nachman to become more, more relevant into the lives of, into, into people's lives than ever before, because now it really is his good to do. Now yeah. it really is, you know, these prayers now have to mean something. These prayers are gonna decide what Hashem's next course of action is going to be. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, sure. Like there's got to be, and, and this is also something that I think is so important for, especially for people who are gifted, is that there's room at the table in the breastlift movement for gifted people because they're taught how to use their gifts so they don't get involved in witchcraft and all sorts of horse shit. I'm serious. Yeah, like sure. Rebbe Nachman saves lives. It's not just Jewish lives. The Rabbi Nachman is capable of saving lives. And most, most people the, are, if you, when you look at, whole, go ahead. No, the whole, the whole world. He, the whole world. <laughs> he said, he said he's going to fix the whole world. That's his job. And when you think about it, the foundation of a soul that's been to heaven and lived in a previous lifetime, this is a man who's truly here to heal i truly heal here to heal the world and i think it's important that um people who are intuitively gifted who follow my show know that if you want to learn about yourself and why you're special you have to start with opening garden of the muna you have to start learning the teachings of rabbi nachman doing tikkun haklali like these are life-saving things and as you become more spiritually aware and get to know Rabbi Nachman, you start to get to know God on a level. See, that's what I think Rabbi Nachman is so special, is that people get to know God where it doesn't become just any more about you and rabbis. It becomes about you and God. Sure. And in that space, when you can pray for anything, I mean, how many people in that space now? You'd be hard pressed to find a breast lover or anyone in the Nanach movement that isn't screaming every day for Mashiach. Right. So one of the things we talked about a little bit on the phone was why do the Nanach dance on cars? Why did, why did Saba 
tell people to do that? Right. Well, <laughs> well, the, the, the first question, why do they do that? Is basically, Saba said to do it. Um, you know, he, he, he gathered the, you know, these people start, when, he, when Saba started really becoming known, so a lot, you know, a lot of people started coming to him, especially Balchuvas and people who didn't, you know, who didn't have so much, of, especially people come from a lot of different, like, uh, difficult places and dark places in life, right? Right. Coming to him. And he, he gave them a, a, something, they, he gave them a way to, to bring the gula, to spread Rabbi Nachman in the world. Um, you know, I can't tell you exactly what Saba's intentions were because okay. who knows? You know, Saba was, uh, he was in a whole another level. But, for, for, mm -hmm. but from my point of view, what I think, how I understand it is there's two things they're doing. Number one is just on the simple level, they're just spreading joy in the world, right? Just by driving, driving around, playing music and dancing is just a simple way to bring joy. You're going, right. I mean, what, it's like, it's like direct, you know, in like the world of like activism, they call it direct action, right? Right. Like instead of just like standing with picket signs, there's, right, there's like, there's like pickets, and you're holding a picket sign or there's direct action where you're going like mamish on the streets, right? Right. So Nanach is like direction, it's like Jewish direct action. You know, it's like going straight, straight to the streets, like grabbing people by the hands and dancing with them. Just stop right. to bring joy to the world because Rabbi Nachman says the main way to fix everything is through simple places. You can't even, you can't even begin to take the first step in fixing anything until you have simcha. Right. Because when there's any negativity and anything, it just, it, there's no, you know, there's, you can't, you can't work with that, right? A person can't grow when they're in a negative state of mind or depressed state of mind. Joy is the first step to fixing everything. So, 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 so there's, there's what, that, that, and then the other level is that it's a way to spread Rabbi Nachman in the world, right? They, right. they have Nanach all over the vans. They, you know, they put up Nanach stickers, they give out Nanach stickers and they spread the books and, uh, you know, and that, and so, and they're spread, they're spreading Rabbi Nachman's books in a way that is getting it to people that maybe wouldn't be able to get, you know, they go into Tel Aviv, right? And they, they you know with the chlonim they dance with them they make they get them in a good mood and then they start talking about the books and then they can get people to to, to get books and hopefully open up and read them right because uh you know the chlonim are you know they 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 expect religious people to be like uh you know like all like you know telling them what to do and putting them down and this and that and so you know if they would come like looking like a regular a regular haredi person these people wouldn't touch the books Right, right. Become, becoming in like a van with music and dancing and with simcha. Right. Okay, there's a lot more. <laughs> you're getting the books to a lot more people that you wouldn't be able to. So I don't know. There's, there's different ways to look at it. The whole thing, but on the basic level, Sabbath told them to do it. That, right. That's the that's the stop level. Is Sabbath said to do it, and we have a moon and Sabbath that he knew what he was talking about. Right. You know? Do you have any personal stories that you feel like? You are positive Hashem saved your life. Yeah. I, my, <laughs> well, Hashem has saved my life too many times for me to count. Uh, I mean, but, the, but really, the, you know, the main thing is Rabbi Nachman. You know, Rabbi, you know the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Nachman's great-grandfather, there are many, 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 many stories. Most of the stories told about him are about his miracles. Right. Right. So the Baal Shem Tov would bring people back from the dead. And that, you know, he would uh, heal sick people and all, all kinds of miracles. And he would like, tra he could travel in, in, in space and all this different stuff, right? That more, more of the stories, but with Rabbi Nachman, you don't really hear that many stories like that, right? right. I mean, think about it. Of all the stories you've heard of Rabbi Nachman, how many stories have you heard where he does miracles? Not very many. Not that many, right? And Rabbi Nachman said the reason he, it's not that he didn't, wasn't capable of doing miracles. He was just as capable of doing miracles as the Baal Shem Tov was. But he said, that the real miracle that he does is bring people back to Hashem, right? right. He, said he, he, he said he revives the dead. Rabbi Nachman said he, he can revive the dead. What's real reviving the dead is bringing back, you know, he said, he said to revive a dead person back to life is much easier than it is to bring somebody who's spiritually dead back, back, to, back to real life. Not even you a know? joke. He said, you know, he said to bring somebody who's physically dead six feet in the, in the ground, bring them back up to let, you know, for, for a tzaddik, it's much easier to do that than it is to fix a person who's alive in this world, who's all messed up and confused and, and to get them back on, on, you know, get them back on the right track.
So that that that's the whole point of Rabbi Nachman is that that's why what's known about him isn't his miracles. What's known about him is that he can do the greatest miracle of all, which is fix the world from from the inside, from inside people's hearts and inside people's souls, and and show people how they can come back to God and come back and and be really amazing people. You know, I mean, all people are capable of being amazing and connecting to God and spreading God in the world. That's what the goal is. The goal isn't just for like an elite group group of people. The goal is for the whole world. And I think people, you know, who, you know so many non-Jews watch this show and um, appreciate the Jewish perspective on things, if nothing else. And that's something that I try to make so clear is that the coming of the messy, the, the entering into the messianic time is I, I believe that we are in the, we're at the very beginning of the uh, seeing, not the very beginning of Gogol Magog, but the beginning of seeing the action in Gogol Magog. You know, now we've seen the, the, we've seen the plagues of sickness, not one, but two. There's all sorts of reports right. throughout the world about blood and rivers, locusts in Africa. There's earthquakes all over the place. I mean, it's very clear the world is forever going, is forever changing. And I think that our next course of action is we're going to start seeing like, I believe with perfect faith, okay, that like the, we are going to see Hashem remove all doubt from the world of, of his existence. Like, that's how much, like, how capable of, with, I, with prayer, that's how capable I think our prayers are, that Hashem will give us a miracle that will remove atheism. Like, there will be no more atheists. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And, um... lost my train of thought for a second. Um, I think that it's especially at a time when people are home with nothing to do, having as much content that is life-saving and entertaining as possible. Like, because when you think about it, non-Jewish people are waiting for something that is not going to occur, okay? They're waiting for Jesus to come back and it, let's just, even let's say he did let's say Jesus was Jewish it's sure. very hard to believe that Jesus would come back as anything other than a Shabbat observing Jew it's very hard to, you know what I'm saying <laughs> sure it's very yeah. hard for people to understand this and when you think of redemption Mashiach is going to be here for everybody. Mashiach is going to have to stare down global leaders and basically wipe them out. I mean, we're Good. dealing we're dealing with like the God that turned Lot's wife to salt. You know what I mean? Like this is sure. not. I I mean. I mean, we're talking about the God that spread a crazy virus in the world that, uh, you know, people are freaking out all over the world about, you know, it's all like you were saying before, you know, it's like uh, Hashem's always been running the show. Right. Like when he but now we're aware of it. Know, it's just, you know, now there's things happening there, you know, it's like, uh, it's like that are making people more aware. Hashem is showing himself more, you know, the, the world is, you know, when the world forgets about Hashem, he, he, he makes his presence known, you know. <laughs> I mean, I think Gogol Magog has gone on since World War II. I think that was the beginning of it. I mean, there are several rabbis who will agree with me. I fall in line with those rabbis. But I think we're starting to see the action now of just what redemption means. And redemption means the whole entire world. And right. other rabbis, you know how many people I, I know that are Jewish and religious, but they wouldn't think to daven for non-Jews? This has gotten to a point where if we want Mashiach to exist, we have to daven for non-Jews. They're our moral and religious responsibility. When Mashiach comes, we are going to have an influx of people who, if they had known about Mashiach, if they had known proper religion, if they had been able to practice the seven laws of B'nai Noach, if they had been Noachites like they were supposed to be, you know what I mean? Right. These are people that are going to run for spiritual, run towards clean spirituality for the first time in their lives. Do you know how many people? I think so, yeah. Like, 
it's just so important to let them know that in our conversation, we acknowledge that Mashiach, the Messiah, is coming for everybody. And I think that's so important yeah. to get across to non-Jewish people is that you are not forgotten. You are not evil. You, and when, when, when the real Messiah comes, it's going to be for everybody. There is going to be no, you don't follow me, you're the devil. You know what I mean? It's like it's, it's people have to realize that the redemption is for absolutely everybody. And Rabbi Nachman is just one spiritual teacher that had a lifetime of living in the body of Moses. So to think in one of his previous lifetimes, and this is why his teachings are so amazing and why it's so important to spread this through the world like spiritual wildfire yeah. is because he lived through that miracle in a previous lifetime. He was taken into heaven. He had to wear a mask. Moses had to wear a mask because his face was so holy. Right. It's, um, it's time to do it and it's time to do it well. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I, I, I agree. It's uh, Mashiach's for the whole world, you know. Rabbi yeah. Nachman, the, the point of the redemption is to fix the whole world. Right. The the point isn't that uh, isn't to destroy. Isn't that we want uh, people, you know, like everyone who doesn't agree with us to be destroyed. Right. right? That's not that's not what the, the Rabbi Nachman's whole, whole point is to fix people from the you know that's because that's the gula is to first fix people have to fix themselves. From the inside out, and then the gula can come. Right. That's where Binaf, he's the teacher. He's the one teaching people how you, you and me and anybody else can fix ourselves from 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 our inside out, and then nobody else can do it for you. Right. You could be a from Jew. You could have a rabbi. You go to shul every day and still have not even begun to fix yourself from the inside. Right. Because because you could a person could put on a put on a you know they could be wearing like a costume you know they could be showing one thing on the outside and on the inside. They could be empty. Right. Right. So Rabbi Nachman is showing how he can fix anybody. Anybody can, can, can get out of his teachings ways that they can fix themselves. And even, and even the non-Jews, even the non-Jews, you know. And, and what, you, what you were saying before, how the people think that they're so wicked, right? That's the right. big thing in the world. And, the, you know, the truth is there is real evil in the world. There is. You know? There are people in this world who are really, really evil people. But most people in the world are not. You know, right. I that, I mean that's what I believe at least. I I believe most people in the world. I, I mean, there's real evil. There was the Nazis, and there's our enemies today. You know, who Hashem should uh, protect us from them now. You know, there's really evil people in the world who want to do real evil, and yeah, those people. You know, you know, Hashem should uh, hopefully you know take care of them. But right. most people in the world are not like that. Most people are not evil. Most people. Are are you know are, are good or have good in them? Just that they've you know they've convinced themselves so much how bad they are that they've lost the, the good that's in them. But it's still there. It's still in there. As right. long as a person as long as a person has even a little bit of good, then then Rabbi Nachman and Mashiach has what to work with. Right. And he says this. He said all the person needs is Nakuda Tova. Just one little point of good. He says even a Rosh Gamur, even somebody who's completely, completely wicked, not meaning wicked like the Nazis, but like somebody who's like in general, like not such a good person, as long as they have a little bit of good in them, they can be fixed. Right. You know, and that's like, uh, people really need to know that because people don't realize that. People think if I've done this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, that's it. I'm evil and God hates me. There's no hope for me. And that's not, that's not true at all. And like one of the things that I think is so important is that People have to understand the world right now. We have a lot of people who are our age who are recovering from things. We have a lot of people who are making religious people who are finding their voice. Like, um, you take a look at the many different rabbis, a lot of them are teaching breastfeeding, whether it be Reb Dror, whether it be, um, oh gosh, Kadalia Fenster, um. Those are just two that come off the top of my head, but I'm saying it's gotten to the point where it's become a vital, of just a vital importance. I think it's just gotten to the point of vital, of vital importance. 
Yeah. I agree. I mean, uh, the, the world needs Rabbi Nachman. I know I need Rabbi Nachman. You know, it's like you were asking me before about like miracles I've seen in my life. And that's how I got sidetracked to that conversation about how Rabbi Nachman is known more for his miracle of saving people. But now, now I remember now why I brought that up. That, that was my answer to your question, kind of, was that, yeah, I've seen like real miracles in my life, but the biggest miracle of all is that, is that I found Rabbi Nachman. Right. And that, and that through Rabbi Nachman's teachings, I was able to come out from just the complete and utter spiritual darkness that I was in and come to Baruch Hashem, a better place. You know, I still have a long way to go, but uh, thank God, at least I'm on the path, you know? Right. And without Rabbi Nachman, I wouldn't even be, be here, you know? And, and that's, and that's, Mama, that's really the biggest miracle. You know, I mean, I've seen, I've seen real miracles in my life also, but that's not, that's, those aren't the biggest miracles. The biggest miracle is that Hashem saved me from, from, from just being a complete, you know, waste of life. Right. Brought me out of darkness into light. That, that's the, that's the real miracle. No, I feel like, um, I organized, I, I mean, I made it my business to bring Rev George to Detroit. <laughs> Because I just thought, you know, I need to know that if, especially if I live in a community that I've done my part to bring Rebbe Nachman's message to the world. I mean, when you think about, I, I should have, I should have prepared myself with this, with this quote book, but, um, what was I going? I'm just thinking of something to ask you. Um, what is the Lakut Hamaran? Lakut Hamaran, that's a collection of Rabbi Nachman's main teachings, which was published while he was still, the first volume was published when he was still alive. Okay. Whereas most of the Breslov teachings were written down, were written by Rabbi Nassim after and published later on. But the Lakuti Maran is all of the teachings that Rabbi Nachman gave in his lifetime that were written down by by Rabbi Nassim. Okay. Just to, to Rabbi Nassim. So Lakuti Maran is basically like the main the main collection of teachings of Rabbi Nachman, basically. Okay. Yeah. And um, is is it is does it is is it like learning? Is it like the Brestle version of the Tanya, or those? If you were to compare it to something, um, I'm not sure because I don't I don't know exactly uh, what Tanya means to um, Chabadniks. Um, I mean, it's it's I mean, to us, it's a part of the Torah, right? I mean, to to, to me, Lakut Imran is a part of the Torah, you know, because uh, you know we have the Chumash, we have the Nevi'im, we have the Ketuvim. And then we have Mishnah and Gemara and, all, you know, it's all different parts of the tradition that, you know, just that came more over, over different periods of time, and especially with like the Gemara and the Midrashim. Those were teachings of the Tzadikim of those generations. And, uh, and now we have the teachings of, uh, of today's Tzadikim. And Rabbi Nachman, he gave us Lakut Imaran, Baruch Hashem. So to me, it's just another, to me, to me personally, it's just another part of the Torah. Right. It's the continuation of the rest of the Torah. And to any other breast lover, I'm sure they would say the same thing. So us, Lekut Imran, is, is mamish. It's, it's like the Torah itself. Because the words that come out of the mouth of the tzaddik, to us, is like the words of, of Hashem. Just like Moshe Rabbein, who spoke the word of Hashem to Am Yisrael. So too, Rabbi Nachman also spoke the word of Hashem to Am Yisrael. And um, did Rabbi Nachman ever say, give any anything? Uh, did you ever talk about being a Navi or was there ever speculation that he was a Navi in, in his, officially in this lifetime? I don't, uh, not that I know. I mean, by his, I mean, by his generation, we don't really have Navim anymore. Uh, at least not in the way that we had Navim back, uh, back in the times of Tanakh. Uh, uh, prophecy basically ended after, after that period. Right. Uh, after the destruction of the first base of I mean, I mean, Tzadikim, like the Baal Shem Tov Rabbi Nachman, they, they had certain elements of, 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 uh, of the Nevi'im, like uh, they could, uh, they could, uh, they could see like a person, like every, they could look at a person and see everything that ever happened to that person. Right. right? And they, and they did have Ruach HaKodesh where they could tell things that were going to happen or things that had already happened. So they had certain levels, but, uh, 
Uh, no, I've never seen anybody refer to Rabbi Nachman as a Navi, though. Because we don't really... Nabi. Yeah. So, when do you think Mashiach's coming? What do you think? What's your... Now. I'm, 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 I'm ready right now. You're ready right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. If, if, yeah. <laughs> if Mashiach comes right now, all I have to do is go home and grab my tefillin. And really? Okay, fine. I'll go, fine. I'll grab my kids too, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I mean, Mashiach, I I want Mashiach now. I want Mashiach to come right now. So I I I, I would love for Mashiach to come right now. I, uh, <laughs> I'm 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 uh, I'm 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 voting I'm voting for Mashiach. So, do you think? So I'm a part of like this group of women, okay? And we're all we're all like this group of religious Jewish women that are psych that are like psychically gifted. Some of the some of them are like me, some of them are not, some of them are just psychic, some are just medium. But the bottom line is like these are like I mean, dare if I include myself with my little gaggle of girlfriends, like pious women. Women that are like we say to him all day long, you know what I mean? Like, sure. and just blessed with a, a blessed with a gift. And one of the things like we're, we're praying for Nebuah back, by the way, we're, we're like praying for Nebuah to, for the world to be blessed with Nebuah again, because it's just so important. But like one thing that we, it would be, it would actually blow your mind how much of like, how much on like we can build off of each other. But one thing we can all agree on is that like, we have all seen the base and the gush come from the sky to the ground. Now, if such a thing were to happen, do you want the base and the gush to come from the sky to the ground or do you want it to be physically the man? Hold on. Um, I'm sorry. So, the question I didn't hear. There was like a helicopter going over. Okay. Um, you were saying the question is if I want to see the Beit Hamikdash come from the sky or be built from the ground. Yes. Ah. Uh huh. Interesting. Right, because this is like this is two different points of view on how it's exactly. going to go down. Um. Honestly, I'm down for either one. I mean, <laughs> I, just want to see the, I mean, I just want to see the world get fixed. Whether we whether it comes from the sky or we build it from the ground. You know, it doesn't make a, a world of difference to me. I don't know if the, if it's wrong uh, <laughs> to say that, but uh, yeah, I mean, to me, I just want to see the world get fixed. Right. You know, that's that's like you know. No, so for like, me, you know, when I when I started learning about Mash like years back, when I started learning about Mashiach and Geula, I wasn't really so like like the whole like the, the fact that there's going to be a temple again that didn't really like affect me so much because I was still really? like new to. Uh, yeah, because I was like, okay, great, it's, you know, a big building, okay, whatever. And like, even the idea of having like Mashiach as king, that didn't hit me so hard. I was like, okay, great. <laughs> like these things, those things, and what hit me was like, because before I was religious, I was very into activism, I, you know, and I, I was very into, I always had this idea of wanting to fix the world. Right. right. That was always what I was concerned with. I was into different kinds of activism, for, you know, and I always wanted you know, my, my, I wanted to be somebody who was helping to fix the world. I always saw the world as being a broken place. And I wanted to help fix it. And when I started becoming religious and learning about Mashiach, learning about the Gula, what hit me the most was that this is, this is it. This is what can fix the whole world. Right. Is that when the Gula comes and Mashiach is king, everything is going to get fixed from the, you know, and whether it happens from the bottom up or the top down, it doesn't matter so much to me. It's just the fact that it's going to happen. Right. The fact that, you know, wars are going to end and people are going to stop fighting and there's not going to be pain anymore. That, those are the things that really hit me when I was learning about the Gula. That's, those are the things that made me be like, wow, I want to be a part of this. I want the Gula. I want Mashiach. Right. Then later on, when I learned more about, like, the, the spiritual side and, like, you know, what the base of Mikdash means and all that, okay, then that stuff had more. But, but initially, it was just, I was like, wow, you know, it was like, it opened my eyes. It was like, here, all these years, I've wanted to, like, fix the world and now here's the answer it's it's so funny like i used to have these ideas of how to fix the world like even when i was younger i thought but there's no way we can do that without god like there's no way we can do that there's no way we can i even i'm saying even when i was young before i was before i was religious or jewish i would think like i want to fix the world but then i would always have that yeah but there's no way you can do that without god where you learn how to like 
connect yourself to God and then learn how to pray the world, like pray the world well. Like, do you intuitively pick up on whether or not you think that like we're in the time? Do you think that we're going to see me? Like, how do you intuitively feel about this entire situation right now with the coronavirus, with everything going on? I think before all of this, we were already in the process of Gula. I mean, or, I mean, even Rabbi Rabbi Odessa, Saba, he, he in, in his time, and he, you know, he passed away in the early nineties, right? And he was saying, and he was saying back then already that we're seeing the the beginning of the Gula, right? Right. So there's no que- there's no question we're already in the process of Gula. So right. all these things that are happening in the world, it's all it's all part of the process, like you were saying, Gog and Magog. You know, this is all this this is all. Uh, unfortunately, these are part of part. There's going to be this pain and darkness before the the, the biggest light. Right. You know, it's just, that's just how it is. Sometimes, you know, I mean, unfortunately. And so that's what we're seeing now. There's going to be pain and there's going to be darkness before we have the, the, the ultimate redemption. And, we, and, you know, for those of us who have faith in Amuna and that know the redemption is coming, we have to just hold on tight and bear through what we have to go through until it comes, you know, and, and right. not give up. Because, you know, all these things uh, are ha- that are happening in the world, the, the main thing for us to do is just hold on to our Amuna. And not let all these things break us down and destroy us, you know. Right. That, that's that's the main test. And it's sure it's all part of the gula. I mean, um, I mean, you know, people could write entire svarim about how every single thing that's going on in the world is part of the gula, you know. Right. And I'm sure people are writing svarim about how. Yeah, I'm sure they're. There. And uh, but uh, yeah, for sure, 100. percent I I believe 100 percent is all part of the gula. Right. So. Anything new going on with Mishiach Hoy? Mishiach Hoy? I mean, uh, not, not, not so much. I, I, because the, the rest of the band, I moved to Baltimore like three years ago, and the rest of the band is still in New York. So, uh, we, you know, we still officially exist, but realistically, we don't really play together a whole lot anymore. I think the last right. time we played together was like a year ago. We did a show in Brooklyn like a, a little over a year ago, and that was the last time we played together. So... Uh, Zat Hashem, hopefully, uh, you know, I mean, I'm always writing songs. I always have, like, songs, you know, just have to record them. So, Zat Hashem, uh, you know. So, are you going to do, like, a solo career? Are you, do you, have you ever thought of doing? I have. I mean, I've done just, I've done acoustic shows. Um, I did one here in Baltimore a couple years ago, so they did, like, a solo acoustic show. Um, and, I, yeah, I've recorded a bunch of acoustic stuff. Maybe one day I'll put it out. I don't know. But you should. The, yeah. Because, I like, you know, when I was in the punk rock scene, there were, like, punk rock bands I was really into. Right. That Who would, like, sometimes, like, uh, you know, go and do, like, acoustic shows. And that really inspired me, you know? like. <laughs> who did an that, acoustic that, show? So I used to no, be really I used to into, be, like, heavy duty into punk rock when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so there's a, there's a number, but I used to be really into this band, Leftover Crack. They're a New okay. York City band. And I used to, they, they're from Lower East Side, and I was from Long Island. So I used to go over to, to Lower East Side in Manhattan all the time to go to punk rock shows. And so I was really into Leftover Crack. I used to see them all the time. And then one day I was walking the Lower East Side, and I ran into Stizzle, the lead singer of Leftover Crack, and I was wearing a Leftover Crack shirt. So he sees me, and he's like, hey, come on, come on I'm about to do an acoustic show. And I followed him and he brings me to this like church, this like church that had like an open lot next to it. And there's like a whole lot filled with like trust punks and he just did like this acoustic show for them. Oh, and, I was, wow. like, and, and he played like all like a leftover crack songs for like acoustic versions. And I was like, it, I, it was amazing. It was like one of the best shows I ever saw. And that like really wow. inspired me. And then, and then after that, I, I, saw, I saw him play acoustic. He started like doing it like on a regular basis, like doing like these solo acoustic shows. And so I saw him like several times do that. And so, yeah, that, that was like, that was very inspiring for me. And so then like, uh, I've, I've also done that a few times. I've done acoustic shows where I've done also a lot of Mashiach Hawaii songs, but in like acoustic versions. And uh, he gets a lot of the credit for that because that, he, he inspired me to, to do that. That's amazing. He's Jewish, by the way. Is he? Yeah, I didn't know. Back when I was into them, I didn't know that. I found out years later that he was Jewish. I've never heard of them. Or was it? I, I mean, I I grew up in Detroit, so I mean, we right. had like local. It was it like a local to New York punk rock scene. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean they're really big in like New York City. Okay. 
in, like in the New York City punk scene, they're well known. Outside of New York, I don't know how well they know. I mean, I know they go on tours and stuff, so I, I guess they're like somewhat known. But uh, I mean, they're still around. As far as I know, they're still like touring and stuff. I, I don't really, uh, I'm not so involved in like the punk rock scene anymore. I don't really like follow it as much anymore. But I think they still play. I think they're still like touring and stuff. Left over crack. But yeah, I, think uh, should, I think you should put your acoustic stuff out. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe I will at some point. That's a shame. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to thank you so much for your time. And is there anything else you think we should add or touch on that you think is important? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, first of all, I thank you because uh, you're giving me an opportunity to, to to talk, and also you're teaching me stuff with uh, the insights you're giving me. So thank you, but oh, uh, yeah, you. The, the, you know the main the main thing is, uh, is uh, the main thing I believe is Rabbi, is the books of Rabbi Nachman, is that if people you know and they're available in all languages in English, Russian, Spanish, French doesn't matter what language you speak and get Rabbi Nachman's books and you can read them and I believe that it could, it could change the whole world. That if people just read so if people just read Rabbi Nachman's stories and they read his teachings about his spodudus and they read just uh, you know. There's the simple books in all languages with Rabbi Nachman's light that people can get, and it could, it could transform the whole world, I believe. You know, and uh, with everything going on in the world right now, with the amount of people dying, I just wonder. We're seeing so many people. You know how, like, remember in Egypt when the babies were thrown into the river, but not one, of, but they all miraculously lived. Not one of them died. Right. So. With the people dying now, I feel like we're so close. We're gonna they're not gonna be dead for long. I think with the TSM, I think I think it's shame. coming. And I think that um we owe it to Rabbi Nachman for giving us all the insight and um of how to pray with uh with real fire and, and penetrate with real tears. And um yeah, I really appreciate having someone it, it, I try not to be redundant, but I feel like I'm just so grateful to have an opportunity to talk to someone who's knowledgeable on this and like actually and gets pleasure out of talking about this themselves. You know what I'm saying? It's so important. It's people who enjoy talking about Rabbi Nachman. Yeah, it's important. I mean, that's the also part, you know, Rabbi Nachman, on, on that note, actually, Rabbi Nachman said that there's, there's three main way, things that a person needs to do. To, to fix themselves and come close to Hashem. He says the three main things is number one, they have to attach, they have to connect to, to the tzaddik, right? To the Moshe Rabbeinu of, of the generation, who we believe is Rabbi Nachman. Right. And we do that through learning his teachings. The other thing is we have to connect to your own, your own neshama, which we do through his spodidus, through speaking right. to God, connect the person. And the third thing is we have to talk to each other. Is that, is that people need to talk to each other about, 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 you know, all of uh, what we're doing right now, talking right. about Gula, talking about, you know, about Rabbi Nachman, you know, and this is, this is the third step that uh, gets lost on a lot of people, right? right. A, lot, a lot of people can dive, dive, you know, dive themselves into the teachings and even get themselves to go to his Spodidus. But the third one, which he calls Sichas Kaverim, which means friends talking, basically, right. is that, that that step is just as vital as the other two. You know, without people talking to each other and enlightening each other about about the MS, it can it can just stay hidden forever. <laughs> right. You know, th this is like the biggest way to bring the gula is just to talk. This, and you know, I think it's so important for people not to, for people to not stay hidden anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I felt like for a long time when I did stand up comedy. I was talking about the shit that I knew would sell eventually one day, but I wasn't talking about the things that I knew were gonna like impact my life. And that's right. one thing I'm grateful for with this show is I can talk about, I have like my own gift of gap. I don't need to do an hour set. I can do an hour show of talking about God and it's more, way more necessary and way more relevant. So thank you so much for being on. And yeah, sure. um, come again anytime. And when you have your, do you, do you have a link you can send me for, Mish, for Mashiach Boys so people can at least check out your old stuff? Sure. Out? Yeah. 
Yeah, awesome. yeah I'll, I'll try to send you a link. So guys, when I post this video, I'm going to post the link to his song. So for those of us who are former punk rockers, it'll definitely take, it'll definitely give you a, a fulfillment of spirituality and punk rock all in the same way. I haven't seen you guys perform in a long time. Ho ho hopefully it'll happen again. Hopefully. I hope so. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I have to say to your audience before I go. Nanach nach minach man miyuman. Right, right. You know, Saba said Rabbi, saying Nanach is also can bring the whole gula just by saying Rabbi Nachman's name is already enough. He said. Right. He said Rabbi Nachman has so much power, so much strength that just saying his name alone can already bring bring healing to the world. So Nanach nach minach man miyuman. Do you know how to do the Nanach swipe? Yeah, sure. My my friend, uh, my friend came up with it, like this, and then you do it like something, something like that. You know, I, <laughs> I think it's like this. I don't so, know. So, so, you know. everybody's got their own way to do it. You know, it's uh, you know, got their own way to not knock swipe. You know, it's cool. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you so much. And sure. uh, um Anytime, have, come back on. We can talk about whatever. A lot, a, a lot of the guests with this show is just an open conversation, and so to see where it goes. Alrighty, everyone. So when you see my video, guys, please subscribe. YouTube so important because we're no longer doing the show on Facebook. So please subscribe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And wishing you all a pleasant day. Next topic. Peace out. Good night.